housekeeping stuff to go over, but before we do that, I have a joke for you. I have a, I have a friend of mine uh, who was driving down the road in a new Mercedes and wanted to see how fast it could go, so you know, got up to 80, it's like, okay, it doesn't even feel like I'm driving, so he got up to 100, all of a sudden he saw blue lights behind him. So he says, oh, I say, okay, I'm a new Mercedes. I can outrun this guy. <laughs> so he did it up to 120, and, you know, blue lights are still following him. Okay, got up to 140. Blue lights still behind him. So, okay, this is not someone's going to get killed. So he pulled up. So the officer walked up to his car with a very stern look on his face and said, look, it's been a long day. Uh, if you can give me an excuse that I have never heard before, I will let you out of the ticket. And my friend looked up and said, sir, I got to tell you, my wife left me for a police officer three weeks ago. I was afraid you were trying to bring her back. <laughs> All right. Well, last week we talked about week twos. Okay, week twos. If I open two diamonds or two hearts or two spades, that is a week. Uh, my partner and I have agreed that that is a weak bid. I have between five and ten points. I have a reasonably good suit, especially if I'm in first or second seat. That is what my partner and I have agreed on. If you are playing week twos, it is vitally important that your partner is also playing week twos. Otherwise, silly things will start occurring. Okay. That's really all I was going to talk about on week two. Is any questions on what we talked about last week? Yes, ma'am. Um, what was that skip you said? Well, what I will do in theory if I pass or if I open at the one level, the person on my left has probably figured out what he's going to do uh, if I've opened with a normal opening bid. But if I open with a preempt, uh, I will usually, I will always, request that the person on my left wait for 10 seconds before bidding. And the way that I will do that is personally, I will announce, I'm gonna make a skip bid, please wait, take the stock card, set it on the table, pull out my two bid, set it on the table, count 10 seconds, pull the stock card away, and then the person on my left is free to bid. Uh, if you don't do this, then the world will remain on its axis, but it's a pretty good idea to do it. Uh, yes? Can you ask if this is a skip? Um, well, you can tell that it's a skip. If they don't put the card down? If it's... If, the thing that designates it as a skip bid is if I if I can bid one spade and I bid two spades, then I've jumped. Okay, so I, I don't you don't ask if it's a skip bid. It just it, it's something that would really be your benefit to be aware of if they're opening at the two level instead of the one level. Good question. Is there an, a minimum number of cards you have to have in a suit for a skip? for a preemptive bid? Um, yes. I always, every single time, have six. Until I don't. <laughs> six is the number you, seriously, six is the number you're looking for. If you're going to preempt at the two level, you got six. Okay? If you're going to preempt at the three level, you tend to have seven. You could have six if you're opening three clubs, and we'll talk about why in a moment. Open
open at the four level, as a preempt, you tend to have eight. Good question. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Would you ever think you can have eight not bed by night to keep the bedding down for your partner? Sure. Be uh, and again, it, that's a great question. Your question was, if you have eight, do you always have to open it at the four level? And the answer is no. If I have a opening hand with a seven card suit, I open at the one level. That's code to my partner that says, partner, I have a hand that's above average in its ability to take trips. Now, if I have eight of them, I'm going to bid them again and again and again. But I'm going to start at the one level, which tells my partner, partner, in addition to having a string of these, and you'll know that I've got a string of diamonds because I'm going to bid them three times, I also have an above average hand and its ability to take tricks. That's why I'm going to open it at the one level. Great question. That's a very important part of preempts. If you have an opening hand, you open it at the one level. Other questions? All right. Well, the reason that we can bid two diamonds and two hearts and two spades as weak bids is because we have one forcing bid that we use. One bid that says, partner, I don't care what you have. I want to hear you bid. The reason that we need a forcing bid is because it's possible that my hand is so big that I could open it to one level and you could pass with a four count, and your four count plus what I have in my hand is enough for us to fulfill a game contract. Does that make some sense? Now, if most people have agreed that the big bid, the forcing bid, the bid that thou shalt not pass is two clubs. Okay, two clubs says, partner, I have a big hand, I want to hear you bid. Now before we talk about what you bid, we're going to talk about what a big hand looks like. Okay. If I open two no trump, how big is my hand? 53 pin points. <laughs> two no? Two no trump. 19 to 21. Uh, 20 or 21 is a pretty standard thing. Uh, with one of my regular partners, we play 19 to 21, but we enjoy doing odd things on occasions. But 20 or 21 is what we're looking for. So what do you do when you pick up a 23 count? You can't, the great thing about opening no trump is I've defined my points within a very narrow range. And then my partner gets to do math. So if I have a 23 count, I need a bid to tell my partner, partner, I'm balanced with a 23 count. And you can't do that by opening two no trump, because two no trump is 20 or 21. Okay, you're off by a couple of points. Okay, so the first time you're going to open, the first type of hand you're going to have to open two clubs is a balanced hand with 22 or more points. Does that make some sense? Yes, ma'am. Why does it have to be balanced? It doesn't. That's the first type of hand you can have, a balanced hand with 22 or more points. Okay. Now, the other type of hand you can have, from her question, is an unbalanced hand. So I've got this fine hand. card that seems unfair <laughs> oh y'all count points <laughs> well how many points do I what do I have it's a 20 count what can I make Like 
I should be able to take five spades. Assume there are three, two, and one of my opponents has a queen. I've got two heart tricks, a diamond trick, and a diamond and a half, or one and a half diamond trick. This is a... Can you imagine that I could open this hand one spade and my partner would pass and we could make four spades? What, what would my partner need? Nothing. Three spades, queen of hearts. Three spades and queen of hearts as long as spades, babe. I'll take my ten tricks. Okay, it might take 11 if the diamond finesse works. You never know. Okay, so this is a hand that is borderline opening two clubs. I'm going to make it a little bit better. Okay. Or, no, 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 no. Okay, now I, I literally need just about nothing from my partner to make game on this hand. Okay. If my partner has the jack of spades, I can get to the board and take a diamond finesse and have a reasonable shot at taking ten tricks. Okay. So how do I open this fine hand? Well, you know, and that... That's fine if you want to open it four spades, but personally, when I open a hand four spades, I've got something that looks like this. <laughs> That's what my four spades looks like. Do I expect to make four spades? Not really, but if I'm not playing spades, then my hand is basically worthless. So four spades for me is a preempt. Okay, it's not a I have a massive hand. Okay, I've got eight spades and I want to get in the opponent's way. Okay, so if I open this hand four spades and open this hand four spades, my partner isn't going to know whether I'm coming or going. So I'm going to reserve my four spade openers as a preempt. And if I have a hand that actually feels like it can make four spades, I'm going to open it two clubs. Now, the basic requirement for an unbalanced hand is a hand with at least eight and a half tricks and at least two defensive tricks outside of my long suit. I was playing with a woman that actually drove up to Northern Virginia to play in a pretty serious event. Um, with a woman, and she picked up this hand. And she was a very studied person. She knew stuff. <laughs> so she'd had a lesson similar to this, and you know, if you have eight and a half tricks, then you have a two club opener. How many tricks does she have here? That's a nine card spade suit, by the way. She's got nine tricks. Okay, so she opened this hand two clubs, and I had a, like a 14 count. So I was, my partner opened two clubs, I got a 14 count. I'm trying to figure out whether we should stay out of a seven level bit. And she kept in spades, and then silly things started happening. Okay, so. Two club opener, two types of hand, balance with more than 22 points, or unbalanced with at least eight and a half tricks, and I've got a couple of defensive tricks on the outside. Which tricks are these two? Uh, it's these tricks, the hearts and diamonds, as opposed to having a nine card spade suit. Yes, ma'am. Sorry if this is too much of a tangent, but let's say she opened that four spades and you had your 14 points. What would you, what would you have said? 
uh, depends on whether my 14 points were aces or kings and queens. Uh, I think they were mostly kings and queens. The reason I say this is because we got to the five level and someone figured out the joke and doubled us when we went down. Oops. Yes, ma'am. If she was a good player, why would she have opened that two clubs with only nine points? Um, because she knew she heard half of a lesson. <laughs> okay? Everybody, I said, two parts of this. Eight and a half tricks in an unbalanced hand and... You have the ability to take a couple of defensive tricks outside of your suit. Okay, now again, she's got nine tricks. If she'd had a tenth spade, she would have ten tricks. She would have game in hand. What should she have said? Oh, she could have bid four spades. <coughs> I would have bid four spades. Might have bid five and came back around. Yes, ma'am. Wouldn't it have been better to have bid instead of going four spades? I'm glad you meant you asked that question because her question was, wouldn't it be better to open two spades and then keep bidding? Okay. If I preempt, I have bid the hand as high as I can, as quick as I can. I don't get to take another bid. I'm not invited to take a take another bid. I have put my partner in charge. Partner, I have six spades and five to ten points. Figure out where we belong. Do something intelligent. If you need to ask me questions, you can ask me questions. But don't think I'm going to go out of my way to bid again unless under duress. Because I've described my hand. Just like when I opened one no trump. I've gotten the hand off my chest. Questions? All right, so I've got these two types of big hands. Let's talk about responses very quickly. Now, if I have a massive hand, what do I want you to do? Bid. Bid, but basically get out of my way. Okay, I've taken, out, I've taken up two levels of bidding to tell you I have a big hand, and I haven't actually told you what my big hand is yet. Okay, so in standard, two clubs, you will respond two diamonds every single time, unless you have something very specific to tell your partner. Okay, when I open two clubs, as the next person passes, I want to hear you bid two diamonds unless you have something very specific to tell your partner. The definition of something very specific has three things. Okay. Five card suit with two of the top three honors, and at least eight high card points. Okay, so you open two clubs, unless I have a five card suit with two of the top three honors and at least eight high card points, my response is two diamonds. I don't have anything special to tell you. I could have an 11 count and not have anything specific to tell you. But if I have a five card suit with two of the top three honors and eight high card points, all of a sudden my partner could get excited because they have a good hand. Okay, so they can almost start counting tricks. Okay, they got two of the top three honors. I'm looking at the king and the jack, so we've got five tricks in that suit. And then they just start doing math. Now, this is pretty uncommon, okay? Usually, you're going to have a two-diamond bid, okay? Got a quiz for you. You got this hand. All right, your partner opens two diamonds, and you have... 
12 count. Life is good. Are you thinking happy thoughts? You should be, because your partner has either a big balanced hand or a unbalanced hand with the real source of tricks, and either one of those gets you excited. Okay? So your partner opens two clubs. What's your response with this hand? Two diamonds. Two diamonds. Partner, I'm getting out of your way. I want to hear what your big hand looks like. Now, most of the time, your partner's big hand is going to be balanced. That's just the way it is. So after the auction goes two clubs, two diamonds, your partner will tell you what his big hand looks like. If he bids, two no. 22, 24, 24 points. And balanced. Reno equals 25 to 27 points. Now, what's the 500-pound uh, gorilla eat for breakfast? Whatever he wants. Thank you. Um, if you happen to pick up a balanced 28 or 29 count, do you know how you should open it? Any way you want. Because you will never see one. <laughs> okay, And I've been saying this for years, and I've said this for years, and sure enough, I did this lesson on a Sunday night, the next day I picked up a balanced 28 count. And I know what to do, the actual bid is, four knows, 28 So this is your balanced, how many high card points you got? Because again, if you're balanced, you want to describe your hand to your partner within a couple of points. Now there's two important things about any bridge hand. First is, do we have enough points for game, or do we have enough points for slam? How many points for slam, give or take? With balanced hands, 33. Grand slam? 37. So if I can tell you how many points I got within a uh, two-point uh, two range, the chance of us getting the right spot go up by a lot. Now what's the second thing we're looking for? Eight-card major suit fit. <coughs> so I'm just sitting here minding my own business with this hand. Two clubs, two diamonds, two no. How many high card points does my partner have? When he bids two nuts? He's got 22 to 24. Do we belong in a slam? No. Well, he's got 22. I've got 12. Yeah, we belong in a slam. Uh, it's very possible six knows the right spot to be. However, do I have a way of asking my partner if he has a four car major? So three clubs is stamen. Now does it make sense to play transfers over two clubs, two diamonds, two no? Absolutely. Because we're trying to find an eight car major suit fit. And stamen and Jacoby are tools that we have in our tool belt to do that. When I open two clubs and rebid two no trump, I bid two and a half no trump. Partner, I got two and a half no trump. If I had enough to be in three, I would have bid three. So I got two and a half no trump. Still want to find an eight card major suit fit if you have one. So three clubs of stamen, three diamonds, and three hearts are still transfers. Okay. Now, one last thing. And when I say one last thing, what I really mean is one last thing. What do you mean, man? <laughs> Two last things. He didn't really mean it.
All right, the auction's going two clubs, two diamonds, two up. How many points does your partner have? 22 to 24. So between the two of you, how many points do you have? 22 to 24. Do you have a good bid to describe this hand? Pass. Okay. When your partner bids two no trump, you are not forced to bid again. However, if your partner changes suits, you absolutely positively owe him another bid. If your partner changes suits, you absolutely positively owe him another bid because he could have game in hand. Right now, all I know is a big unbalanced hand with spades. He could have that eight and a half trick hand all the way up to he's got a full throated 10 point, 10 tricks in his hand, needing nothing from me. Okay, so I owe him another bid. In standard, the code, you should always have a code. Okay. The code for partner, I have a rotten hand. A hand with no redeeming value whatsoever is bidding the cheapest minor. So here, if I bid three clubs, that's code to my partner saying, partner, I have a hand that may be worthless to you. Do something intelligent. Questions, comments? Yes, ma'am. I've got to respond. My partner said bid. You know what I do when my partner says bid? I bid. Because his two clubs, he doesn't promise a club in his hand. Some big hand bids something so I can describe my big hand. Okay. So he doesn't know anything based on my two diamonds except that I don't have anything significant. I, I do not have a five card suit with two of the top three honors and at least eight high cards. So yeah, he doesn't really know anything about my hand. I could have a zero count, I could have a 10 count. Yes, sir? Definition of worthless hand. Uh, no ace, no king. Some people play no ace, no king, not more than one queen. Yes, ma'am? So how does the bidding end? Is three clubs? <laughs> it ends <coughs> with whatever my partner bids. Because now that I told him my hand is done, Actually, in standard, if my partner changes suits, I still owe him another bid. So let's say he bids three hearts. <coughs> in standard, I still owe him another bid. God, how much do I hate bidding with a zero count? Okay, but if he bids three spades, what's he telling me? No, he's not saying he doesn't need my help. He's saying, boy, I wish I'd opened this thing at the one level and could have played one spade instead of three. Oh, okay. All right, but he doesn't want to be in game. 